in the field of genetics when we study sex linked inheritance pattern then there are several aspects which we interact uh, like uh, x linked inheritance or y linked inheritance or sex influenced features or sex uh, limited traits uh, likewise there is one aspect that is pseudo autosomal inheritance so with this presentation i am going to explain what is pseudo autosomal inheritance see uh, there are genes which are located on the homologous part of x and y chromosomes and such genes show inheritance pattern exactly similar to autosomal genes and therefore they are referred as pseudo autosomal genes let us have idea about uh, this aspect see this is x chromosome this large one is x chromosome this one is a y chromosome which is comparatively very small and uh, in case of mammals including humans uh, we are xy types that is males are xy uh, whereas females are xx uh, these are two sex chromosomes so besides autosomes 22 pairs of autosomes in our case we have a sex chromosome as x and y in other mammals also they will have autosomes and the sex chromosome in the form of x and y chromosomes in case of drosophila also males possess x y sex chromosomes so uh, let us have a very clear cut idea that what does pseudo autosomal genes mean actually if you observe the x and y chromosome you will find that at the extreme tips of x chromosome uh, there are regions which are exactly similar to the regions present on y chromosome that is why x and y chromosomes are considered as homologous chromosomes because they have homologous part uh, in both the chromosomes although they look morphologically very different from each other but because of presence of such regions they can pair during meiotic division so there are genes located on this uh, extreme extreme portion of x chromosome as well as y chromosome which can uh, pair during the packetin stage of uh, prophase 1 now such regions are referred as par1 and par2 in the x chromosome and exactly the same way they are uh, referred as par1 and par2 in the y chromosome so such regions are actually pseudo autosomal region ha huh? par stands for pseudo autosomal region so <clears throat> suppose certain genes are located in this portion of the x chromosome exactly same number of genes will be present in the y chromosome and these genes do not undergo inactivation process because we know that genes located on x chromosome they may experience inactivation in case of mammals but they do not undergo inactivation in our case and uh, there may be exchange of genes uh, between x and y chromosome of this par1 region or par2 region because of crossing over so crossing over may also take place in this area and because of that the uh, gene situated on y chromosome may reach to x chromosome or vice versa so and you see the uh, this remaining portion of x chromosome uh, which uh, possesses uh, a number of other genes and they are actually exclusively on x chromosome they do not have their homology on the y chromosome so inheritance of such genes will be referred as x linked inheritance or sex linked inheritance likewise those genes which are situated on uh, y chromosome and do not have you know homology on the x chromosome they are uh, y linked genes they are whole entric genes whole entric genes means they are completely y linked genes they are transferred from the uh, male parent to the male parent only means father inherits this uh, y chromosome only to sons so <clears throat> this aspect you should know that uh, the chromosome this particular chromosome will be going in case of, because in case of male you know xy system will be there so male will be heterogametic that is 
uh, that individual will be able to produce two different kinds of gametes. 50% of gametes will have uh, X chromosome containing you know, sperm and 50% will have Y uh, chromosome. Now, so we have come to know that uh, the genes may be situated in this uh, extreme portion, homologous portion of the X and Y chromosome, which show their inheritance pattern exactly similar to autosomes. That is why they are referred as pseudo-autosomal genes. Now, these are certain points. You can uh, go through such points. Males have two copies of pseudo-autosomal genes. Definitely just like autosomes, a male will have X and Y chromosome and on the homologous part, a single gene may be present on both. So, you can say that the uh, single gene locus will be present uh, on both the chromosomes, that is X and Y. Exactly the same way, females also possess two copies of pseudo-autosomal genes. Then crossing over, which I just mentioned, crossing over between X and Y chromosomes is normally restricted to the pseudo-autosomal regions. And uh, females can inherit and an allele originally present on the Y chromosome of their father. Means because of this crossing over or exchange of chromosome segments between X and Y, uh, the genes located on Y chromosome may reach to the X chromosome. So the next point is we can take up a case and this particular case is related to pseudo-autosomal inheritance. It is a case of a human being and uh, a particular family was actually considered. The individuals of four generations and their records were available. So this is a pedigree in which a specific disease case is reported and that disease is dyschondroesteosis. Dyschondroesteosis is a uh, pseudo-autosomal gene uh, related syndrome or disease and it is actually dominant in nature. And those individuals who carry this uh, disease, they are actually heterozygous. Means they will have single copy of this, uh, the defective or mutant allele. It, uh, it is a dominant inherited skeletal disorder. In case of skeletal disorder, particularly the limb bones are affected. So such individuals are short statured and they have also deformity in their four arms. So it is a skeletal system disorder. Now uh, what we can see in this family that in the first generation, you know, the parents are there uh, in which this female was actually suffering. She was suffering from this country osteosis and uh, you can consider that she might have carried two X chromosome and one of her X chromosome was carrying the mutant LE. Now she inherited this disease in the next generation. In the next generation, this couple uh, had, you know, three children. See here, uh, the first child was a female, then a male child followed by a female and two of them were sufferer, means they showed the trait. See here, this female might have got the X chromosome containing mutant allele. So she was sufferer. She was married uh, with a normal person. And in the next generation, uh, she had, you know, uh, or they have uh, three children. Out of them, uh, one, uh, you know, female child was a sufferer. And again, uh, she was actually married uh, to a normal person. And in the fourth generation, you can see that uh, there are two female uh, children were showing the trait or showing the disease. Now here, this male individual, this also obtained the mutant um, gene containing X chromosome from the mother. And that is why this fellow showed the trait. And this fellow was married to a normal female. In the next generation, you see, uh, this couple has three, you know, children and out of uh, these three, two suffered from the disease. Okay, now the X chromosome present in that fellow, we can consider 
that uh, that contained the mutant gene but from uh, and that was actually transferred that x chromosome was transferred to this female so she showed the trait but since this male also showed the trait so it became the matter of attention because what we find that this father will only inherit y chromosome to the next generation and in fact this father this individual carried x chromosome because he got x chromosome from his mother that was containing the uh, mutant gene or mutant allele so exactly what happened during meiosis actually the mutant gene got transferred from the x chromosome to y chromosome also so that x chromosome which reached to the next generation and in this female the x chromosome was there containing that mutant gene but in this male the y chromosome came and that y chromosome actually carried the mutant allele because of crossing over so this male showed a trait only because the y chromosome was carrying the uh, mutant gene or mutant allele of uh, this chondrocytosis and uh, uh, that allele was present on y chromosome only because of crossing over so this particular pedigree helps us to understand the inheritance pattern of uh, this particular disease causing you know allele that is uh, this chondrocytosis disease causing allele and uh, we can also understand that crossing over do take place between the homologous part of x and y chromosome now the gene located on x the small arm of x chromosome and the small arm of y chromosome that does not undergo inactivation contain homeobox containing transcription factor likely to be involved in regulation of stature so later people might have worked in detail uh, on this particular uh, locus and uh, they might have sequenced the gene and studied the molecular aspect of it and they found uh, the molecular nature of this uh, particular gene that it was a transcription factor uh, which was actually involved in regulating the uh, skeletal development of the individuals so those who suffer from uh, dyschondriostosis are mainly heterozygous individuals this i explained in the beginning that it is not a homozygous dominant disease because probably individuals who carry uh, such mutation in homozygous condition uh, will uh, not be surviving this might be causing lethality in homozygous condition so these are important points to understand the phenomenon of pseudo uh, autosomal gene inheritance